This video is going to be about groundwater and our groundwater models that we used in class. So if you missed the groundwater models or if you don't remember them or you never understood them, hopefully this video is going to help you. So groundwater just defined uh, is water that moves through the spaces in the rock and sediment underground. It's an important freshwater source and it is not like a river or a lake underground. The water is actually in a layer of rock that we call an aquifer. Okay, So this aquifer is kind of like a sponge. They say that an aquifer is um, rock or sediment layer where water can flow or be stored. So think of a sponge. All right, So here's your sponge and this is what an aquifer is like. This would be the rock layer and within the rock layer are pores these spaces and um, water can flow through that and water can be stored in that and we can drill into it to get water out okay and that's called well water so our model that we used in class looked something like this if you remember all right where we had a recharge bottle up here full of water and the water would uh, fill up this column and it would flow through this whole system so this whole thing is representing your groundwater model. All right, and if you look on the right-hand side, there is another column that says water. So you got one level here and one level here. That must mean that our landscape is somewhat slanted down and our water table needs to follow that line. So this that I just drew, that's my water table. That's the most important thing. Uh, to start with, I think, is where is the line for your water table, All right? So there it is. That's the water table. What that means is that everything above it, okay, if this is land, and like this, this top line is the surface of my land, let's say, and this is where the tops of all my wells are up here, and that means that this black line, from the black line to the blue line, that must all be what is called our unsaturated zone um, or otherwise known as um, the zone of aeration. So all of this blue, sorry, all of this green that I'm using is the zone of aeration. Okay. So zone of aeration is all of that green. You can see I've got some features. I've got a septic tank. Remember that stores sewage, so yucky poop is in there. We got a lagoon that might be leaking, uh, you know, from the bottom of it, and we've got a lake here. All right, the surface of the lake um, would be right there. All right, everything under my water table then is my saturated zone. So for my saturated zone. I think I'm just going to do this, all right? So all of this cross hatching that I'm doing, and it says that this is sand layers here. Okay, so all of this is different layers of sand. So this is my saturated zone. That means that this is the aquifer, and it is. All of the pores are saturated with water. Okay? So far, so good. All right. So now, um, I'm going to label a couple things for you. So, for the top, this is my zone of aeration. We also call it the unsaturated zone. Okay? Unsaturated zone, or also known as zone of aeration, is all of my green that I drew. Okay? The blue is my water table. And all of this yellow highlighting that I did, 
all of this yellow highlighting is my saturated zone. Okay, it's all of the pores are saturated with water throughout this whole thing. All of this yellow is called the saturated zone because it's below the water table. Okay, um, this, all of this again too, is the aquifer. This is the stone layer or sediment layer that's made of pores that is storing the water somewhat like a sponge. Okay, so all of this is the aquifer. And then notice that I've got this thing called the clay horizon. That just means it's a layer of clay. And if you remember, clay is not permeable. When you played with clay when you were little, you know, you, you could even just tell just by playing with it that water is not going to pass through it. So clay is impermeable. So this is an impermeable layer. And we'll label that as such. Impermeable. That means that water can't just seep through from here down to there or here to here and so on. So all of this is impermeable. All right, underneath that is another gravel layer. So that means that that's another aquifer. So that would be kind of a gravel type sponge that's storing water. Okay, so here's another aquifer. Now, we call this aquifer down low because it's under an impermeable layer. We call this a confined aquifer. All right. And then all of this that, that is above that brown layer, all of this is the unconfined aquifer. All right. So all of it, all of this. From here all the way down. All of this is unconfined aquifer because it's not under an impermeable layer. Okay. So now <clears throat> look at the wells. There's lots of different wells all along the top and they're all drawing water. Um, but if you look, A is drawing from this unconfined aquifer, so you could pump water up and out of A. C is also pumping water out of this unconfined aquifer layer, and E is also, and so is F. So they're all using the same aquifer. Okay. If you start pumping out of one of them, you're taking water out of all of the same aquifer. Okay, so if you're using a lot, you could actually lower the, the water table. Um, let's take a look at which way this water would be flowing in this system. And if you remember, it's flowing this way. Number one, you can see the landscape is flowing downward. But the other big thing is that was where our drain was. So this is like the outlet of the system. And because of that, that is which way the water flows in our model. And it always flowed from left to the right. So this is your outlet or drain right there, which means that the water is going to be flowing this way. All right. Now I've got some other wells that are kind of drawing up water from a different aquifer. If you look at well B, it's going all the way down and drawing water up from this confined aquifer. Same thing with D. It's drawing water up from the, un, uh, from the confined aquifer as well and so is well G. It's pulling water up from the confined aquifer. All right, well, what if we had a toxic spill? If we had a toxic spill in this aquifer, then these wells could potentially be affected. What if the, the toxic spill was um, right about here? 
Okay, so somebody spilled something and it leaked down, and it's right here. Would wells B, uh, A, B, and C be affected? A, B, and C. No, they wouldn't because the water is flowing this way and your contamination would be flowing this way. All right, so A, B, and C are not going to be contaminated if the spill is right in here. All right, what if the spill were right, what if the septic tank leaked? So we've got this septic tank leaking out some, some waste. All right, <clears throat> so it's going to be traveling this way, all of the waste. And so which wells would be contaminated? C, E, and F. Why not B, D, and G? Because they're going to be in the way too. But look at where their bottom of their pipe is, is under the clay horizon. So this clay horizon is going to keep this water down here separate from the water up here. All right. So you're going to have safe drinking water in B, D, and G if your spill was somewhere up here. All right. Um, let's see what else. What else can I tell you about this? Um, if the leaky lagoon has some kind of a leak as well and starts leaking out, again, which wells would be contaminated? Probably not C, unless it kind of went straight down. But most likely what's going to be affected will be the wells that are over here. So E and F would be affected. All right, so I think that is everything that I need to tell you about um, your model. I guess one other thing would be what could lower this um, water table. So what could make the water table go lower if, if everybody was using their aquifers a lot? So if, per, if well A, C, E, and F were all pumping a lot of water, that could lower the water table slightly. Okay, or what if it was um, raining a lot? If it was raining a lot during a rainy season, then that water table can raise up and it would raise up into this unsaturated zone. So the whole system would be shifted up a bit. Okay, so I hope that helps. I hope that uh, you remember this lab and study for finals. All right, good luck.